Hey hey, welcome back to the channel. It's awesome that you're tuning in because in this video we have something pretty damn awesome to show you. Any was returned with the retro mini PC. It's a very unique design, but also when it comes to the lineup of all kinds of retro, let's say kind of a look when it comes to different devices. A mini PC that looks like an old school Macintosh PC, if I'm saying it correctly. Uh, to be honest, this is basically before my time that I ever start with mini PCs at all. But it's a multi-system that you can use for desktop use, just your casual, like say, office. Game system, you can play some video games with it, and multimedia system. So this is basically the idea of what they're trying to do with this mini PC. I do was surprised of the AMD Ryzen 5 5700U inside of the machine. So this is the configuration of the 16GB, 512GB storage and Windows 11 Home. Nevertheless, in here we're finding the machine itself, and I must say that I find it very cool looking. The weight itself, it's okay, it's not like the most heavy devices. Think about B-Link with their nice, very looking metal enclosures. But let's do a quick overview on that later. In here we're finding more power, basically products and stuff that we're getting for free. Because that is what we also like, free stuff. <sighs> Seriously, I'm going to rip this thing apart. All right, attempt number two, Opa. there we go. The box is really freaking flimsy, okay. So it's a box inside a box. It's like freaking magic. Let's rip it all apart. I'm getting really annoyed now with this thing. Oh, another box. Woo, another box and another box. This is the power adapter. And let's check out what kind of power adapter we're getting with this device. So this thing comes with a 12 volt adapter. Oh, in total 72 watts. Do we have an adapter? I'm guessing the adapter is in another box. Okay. Well, let's check out. Ooh, we have all kinds. Light plugs. Nope. That's not it. Nope. That's not one then. HDMI cable. It even comes with pry tools and some screwdrivers. And even all the needed things like screws. But shall we take a close look at the device itself, what are we actually getting? So first of all, the look is pretty nice, I already mentioned before, but the weight is okay. So at the back we're going to get ourselves one RG45, we have three USB 3.0, one 2.0, then a display port, an HDMI port, and the input for the power supply. I do notice when it comes to the, let's say, the configuration, there is a lot of, let's say, room for ventilation, so that's very nice. At the front, it seems to be we're having an audio jack, and we're having a USB-C connection. At the bottom, we can see the intake fan, it comes with a very nice rubber over there. And the way how this actually looks and the way how everything is assembled, yeah, it's not bad at all. This thing is going to be looking really cute. And on top, the micro switch for turning it on and off. And this is nothing, it doesn't do anything whatsoever. But let's do a teardown later on. So when you're looking at the specifications of the a &E Retro Mini PC, it comes with an AMD Ryzen 5 5700U. There are different kind of configurations out there most of the time, with different kind of, I'm guessing, like when it comes to RAM, but also when it comes to storage capacity. I was very glad to have this thing with 5 on 12 GB. It's more enough for, let's say, your typical use, but of course for gaming it's going to be not enough. But I also can upgrade it with a 2.5 inch drive, so that's absolutely great. It does come installed with a very nice looking background. But let's take a close look at the program called ANU Space. It is familiar to me when it comes to the handheld devices. And that is actually what they wanted to do with this ANU device. They want to do the same kind of things when it comes to the handhelds. The software, I must say, I do have a mixed feeling about it. Later on I'll also explain why this is. So the way how it looks, we're not going to update it, we're going to do this later, but I just want to give you a quick overview, actually what you can do with this. Basically what you're getting is a piece of software that runs on the background. And you can just tinker with also the settings of the mini PC from here. In combination with, let's say, different presets, we're also having AAA games. If I say, if you want to have maximum power, you can just put the TDP to its maximum limit. For the, let's say, the handheld Windows devices, this is a very easy to use program and very convenient you want to save battery. And yeah, I think in this case it's only if you're going to be switching between office work and playing games. You can just basically mess around with the mini PC from this point and just easily tweak everything and not go into Windows and mess around with some kind of, let's say, different programs. Another thing I just wanted to showcase is all of the information of the mini PC where we're going to do some emulation testing. I've been messing around with the say the ENU device for some time now and just want to check out what can we actually do. So I've been checking out the resolution, 
1366 by 768. All of the settings will be set to low and we're just going to be keeping it there. The thing I've noticed when messing around with the AI Neo software, I just wanted to check out how everything works. The first thing that was kind of weird that I didn't have a frame per second meter on somehow, so I added myself another one at the right top corner. So playing around, we're having around 50 FPS's. But switching, let's say, without the AI Neo software, somehow I was getting a way better overall performance with exactly the same settings. And to my surprise, I was just like flabbergasted seeing that the software is just drawing a lot of power or there was something on the background basically using too much power and it has like a bad like an influence on the game we're actually playing. All right, so let's move on to the full HD. So basically every setting set to low and just want to go back to the games just to see how we're going to have emulation performance now. And we don't hitting like always in 50 FPS, but this is actually the best we're getting when it comes to Chris Bandicoot. Let's you just stick it with the 1080p. We're going to put every single setting to low and let's take a close look at one of my favorite fighting games, Dead Alive. And you can just see that it really struggles with this particular chipset. Of course, we can just go, let's say, different resolution, trying to hit a 50, maybe 60 FPS. But this is just actually what we're going to get when it comes to this chipset. And it's a very cool piece of technology, but for these, let's say, more demanding games, it's not powerful enough. But where this mini PC is pretty damn awesome is that we're getting absolutely great overall performance with some old school games. Think about indie games, Street of Rage or some Outrun 2006. A couple of games are running pretty damn great. So let's do a quick overview on a couple of those. So let's take a close look inside the machine itself and let's open it up. Of course you can upgrade it, but that's the thing that I also wanted to see how does it actually work. I've noticed in the toilet paper manual that we need to open it up and I'm using the original, let's say, screwdrivers I'm getting with them. I can, I can tell you these things are not comfortable at all. doesn't matter the way the construction is with the screw and also with the rubber feet. It's a very nice way how they actually did this. And I can really appreciate the way how they made this particular like product. Two prior tools, they are very thin. So let's see if we can just stick them right in. Let's see which the best way to go to when it comes to this. All right, there we go. And just open it up. All right, so let's be very gentle. I don't want to break anything of the plastic. Oh, that went really easy. Okay, so inside we could have like a sneak peek, but what they actually did with this particular product there is a tiny, let's say, mini PC in the inside of this thing. And you can see most of the product, everything is like plastic. And that's also why this thing is so lightweighted. So the fan, it's a, the way the construction is, is absolutely great. Here you can just actually see that when it comes to this, you can just like, open it up fairly easy. But oh, when it comes to the other part, yeah, this is going to be a slightly different story. First of all, yeah, when it comes to this, you need to like... Get these screws off and there are like four uh, there are three of them i can see over there there and there but at this annoying ribbon cables i think i'm going to be flipping it open like that so three screws need to be removed we can just flip it open like that oh there were a lot of freaking oh man you're seriously oh 
the construction of this thing we need to be lifting it up like that and here you can reach into let's say all the other compartment so having the nvmu that can be changed out we have dual memory so that's absolutely great if you want to play some emulation love dual channel by the way but we have different kind of ways you can install like storage devices so we're just going to do some emulation testing with windows and maybe later on we can do a bodice here image by building the hard drive inside of the machine or use an external one but let's get into it from emulation and by the way i've never heard of this brand they're using of an ssd inside the machine we're not really going to focus on let's say the 8-bit 16-bit era because those will run perfectly on a powerful mini pc like this i want to mainly focus on let's say some higher demanding or more demanding emulators The first thing I wanted to check out is a PlayStation 2 with one of my favorite games, Tekken. And yeah, you can even upscale it without any problem, even despite they're using an older chipset of an AMD inside this thing. So for PlayStation 2 emulation, it's absolutely great. But with PlayStation 3, I've noticed that we do have a very long loading times with games, something you don't have that often when it comes to faster chipsets or newer ones at least. And of course also the shaders, you can see the compiling shader notification in the left bottom corner a lot when actually playing this game. I don't find it really annoying and the overall gameplay is still very smooth. <laughs> Okay, so I wanted to play some God of War, the change of kinkiness, with some 10 times resolution, or in other words, I think it's even 4K internal resolution, but you can see that mini PC struggles a lot with this. So I needed to lower it all the way up by the way to 8 times. With the Redream emulator, we have the option to change out the eternal resolution. And I've been messing with it, and the best I think is going to be the 2560 by 9020. That's, in my opinion, one of the best ones actually to do. And here we do have an overall okay performance when it comes to, let's say, Dread Alive and some other games. <laughs> Let's move on to the GameCube and in here we did have some struggles going on when basically booting up the emulator for the first time. I uh, needed to miss around also with the eternal resolution where we're having a maximum of 1080p. This is the far as we can just push this in combination with the F-Zero game. With some different games maybe we can just go a little bit higher that are less demanding. But take consideration GameCube is a very difficult one to emulate and particularly when it comes to let's say with lower power chipsets like this particular one.
GameCube did struggle on 1080p. You'd notice it when actually like, showcasing the gameplay. But when it comes to the Wii, yeah, there we're going to have like, not even like say the best overall experience. So we need to do a lot of tinkering getting this to run on this older chipset.